Right now we're in the process of switching out the control board for the C2 compressor for another C2 compressor in the other chiller. But the problems didn't start here. Let me take you over where they started. On the very first call, let's coming out, taking over the property. This starter, which is on C1, had completely blown. And before today, we had not been able to get this one to stay online. As you can see, it is currently running now with a UTS, which is up to speed, which is a really big deal. Uh, we've, we've got that one functioning. We are still having trouble with C2. So C2, there was a problem with the board and uh, this particular SCR had blown. We ended up changing out two of the three SCRs. We were not able to get approval for the third SCR at the time. So we're making do with what we have. You can kind of see this thing was just one big charred mess. This was the one that was mounted on the top side up there. So initially it didn't make a whole lot of sense. We tried to do the come in and do the startup on this. This one was throwing a 39 code and this one was throwing an F1. Well, if we come over here, we were able to figure out that, uh, you know, F1 was the up times, uh, up to speed time limit had expired. It was actually a really simple fix. What had happened was uh, we forgot to, to program the motor current uh, or update it in the system on P1 and P2 because if you look, the default parameter is 10 amps uh, for both of those. That's just a placeholder. That's not the actual final it's supposed to be. There's several parameters in here that are just placeholders at the end of the day. Once we got that addressed and, and it, we realized what we missed, uh, that was no big deal. This circuit's been online just fine ever since. This circuit, we're still having issues with 39. We've changed out the CTs. We've ohmed them out. You know, these are reading 10 ohms now. Uh, we swapped them out with a different circuit and actually what we did is we took the old CTs off of one. They weren't having problems. We did it, get new CTs when we ordered the whole starter assembly. So this entire kit is brand new at the moment. We were only able to piece this one out for what we were able to get approved for the repair. Anyway, we have yet to get this starter to work with us. Now we did have some other issues when we first got here this morning. This keep in mind i'm trying to catch you up to speed on on a job that's been in progress for months at this point just piece by piece it's it's one of those where you can only do a little bit at a time and it just one thing turns into another but anyway they're having some air bleeding issues where the loop is collecting air we're working on addressing that but when I, this morning when i got here uh, so this is a chiller that will run and both of the or the both barrels on each or each chiller's barrel let me say it that way the uh drain plug or the the vent valve on this chiller i was able to open it because we heard some gurgling in the pipe and sure enough it was just full of air i mean hardcore set there for a solid 60 seconds bleeding air on the out of that valve same thing on this one now we have since got this one online. This is the first time this particular chiller has ran at all. From what I understand, going on close to a year. It has not functioned whatsoever. I've only recently gotten involved. Uh, our team has been working on it, like I said, for a few months now. Anyway, so the fact that we have this compressor on is a big accomplishment. We're still struggling with this one. Now, coming back to what we're doing over here, we didn't change this board. This is a retrofit board that was in here. This is the original that was in place, but this board is having a no line voltage alarm and we don't quite understand why. It's not making a whole lot of sense. We've got voltage input. We've got everything everywhere it needs to be, but it won't recognize that it had voltage. Now, the initial thought was, well, okay, maybe that board was bad. But once I got here and got to looking at it with the guys, I'm just, you know, I'm really questioning, is it bad? Somebody's replaced it. It hadn't ran since we got on site. Like we've never seen this circuit run since we took over. So what's the actual problem here? At this stage, what we've come down to, because so we were getting the NOL, which is no line, and we were throwing a, um, what was it? An F28, which is no line voltage alarm right there so but circuit one's running just fine it's not having issues one of the things we did do now i don't recommend this but out of the sake of testing and troubleshooting we did end up taking our start input and just running a temporary jumper to the contact coil so that when the microtech called for the circuit it automatically brought the uh, bypass starter in and it the compressor does turn on it does run and we did get a, a 40 code which is a shorted or open uh, scr which is honestly that's that's a good thing it tripped on that like that's a positive it means that the board can do more than just throw a 39 code which is part of what we were trying 
trying to prove. Anyway, what we're curious to see is, okay, we know what each board is doing. Do the alarms follow the boards? So is this one going to throw a 39 on the other one as well? Are the alarms going to stay? Do we now get a 39 with the other board here? And does this board register a no line inside the other chiller? It's kind of a long shot. Again, I don't really recommend swapping boards like this, but when you're kind of in a scenario of you don't have very many other options, sometimes this can be an effective way of just making some kind of progress or just making some kind of sense as to what's happening. So as we're in this process, something we've picked up on, you'll see this starter, that orange piece is just sitting flush. And that's how basically all of them are, except for this one over here that we just put in. That orange piece is hanging out. And I noticed it as we're sitting here and it just it seemed weird to me, but I, I, it just hadn't really hit my head that there may be something going on there. So before we get any further, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open these starters up, do a visual inspection. You know, we're not trying to blow something up on purpose okay so this one looks okay okay i'm not gonna go any further with this starter yeah i'm not gonna even try so at this stage we're gonna leave that disconnect off i'm not gonna turn that back on until that starter gets addressed uh what we are going to continue with doing the board swap so ideally if all works out okay then uh, maybe we'll get some better results out of this board if this board will just make this compressor run like fine we will take what we got and we got three compressors. We started off with just one compressor on the entire uh, plant here functioning. If we could walk away today with three, we've already got two. If we can walk away with three, we've, we've really made some serious progress. All right, so what we can determine at this point, we still get NOL even though we've changed out the board. So regardless, we can at least feel comfortable. This board is a problem. We're gonna move on and we will focus on trying to get the other board figured out now. It would just the 39 the, the, the why is it not sensing the cts we've got them uh checked you know it's 864 on the uh what do they call it uh the ct ratio so we were running 864 which if you read the things 173 for every 0.2 amps so you multiply that by five gives you 864 yada yada that's what we've got a program for oh we have a f60 what is f60 oh that's our that's hey actually wait hey 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 this is a good thing wait a second okay so this is a jumper we know how to fix this well let's fix this so we're back to nol we've got the jumper in it did this last time we're gonna just let it call and once it gets the call to start does something else happen well because one i guess one or two things will happen either we'll get we'll probably get another code for example if it gives us an f28 then we know we're right back where we started with this board and we'll end up just condemning this board and you know we're not really any that any further along you, you're seeing the process here like for anybody that thinks i'm some special g whiz you, you're seeing the process this is just sometimes trial and error you just gotta trial and error until you eventually get something to work the dreaded f28 all right we can condemn this board giving up on it no more Let's get the other board in here the 39 why is this not making sense something is not letting it pick up the cts or it's not showing current. Like we got the voltage set right. We got the amps set right. Everything's supposed to be there. Immediate theory, maybe this SCR is having an issue. This SCR has been replaced recently, but uh, it's it's the uh, trigger coils aren't reading consistently. So on this other newer one, it's reading 24, 24 on both sides, no issue. This entire new set, all three are reading eight across the board. 24 on one side and 17 on the other. Uh, and we have seen some weird uh, current issues where that particular SCR's leg, when it goes to try to do a start, these two legs will show current. This third one won't. We're starting to really question, maybe we rob an SCR off of that down starter. I'm really nervous to do that. I mean, we're starting to swing for the hills here. So I really want this compressor to spin today before I leave. So testing the SCRs on this starter, uh, one of them, the trigger points read uh, 13 and 14. Another one, which looked like it was in pretty good shape visibly, was reading 13 and 13. And then the other one was reading OL and 10. Uh, without a doubt, that bottom one there, absolutely toast. This one is questionable. I'm not going to take that one. We're going to pull that top one up there and we're going to transplant that one to see maybe it's got something to do with the triggers. So yeah, this one between the board, the SCR and that uh, starter, just that whole pole assembly is not worth saving. Okay, we got an F27 with changing out that, that SCR. So what is likely the case then is we've got two bad SCRs maybe. And so two of them weren't firing. Now we've only got one not firing. Cause yeah, 27, come over here. 
That's phase loss. I'm freaking ecstatic right now. We still got an alarm, so the compressor didn't turn on. But now I gotta, I gotta figure out. I mean, I gotta roll the dice now. I don't know which which SCR is next. And I'm assuming, you know, that that was the case for one. You know, it's weird to me how high though 24 when these are also brand new ones. Now they're not exactly identical because here's the one we took out. I know. This is going to go back uh, so that we can claim warranty on this because, well, they're bad out the box. Like, they, they've never once ran. We can throw a different one in there and it does just fine. So, clearly they're bad out the box. So, more than likely, the other new one we put in on the bottom there is, is probably our problem. So, maybe the one that we still had over here that had just like the 14 and 13, we're probably going to grab that one change that one out next and just see what happens and there she goes fellas at uts uh so right now we've just enabled this one again it'll be coming on but she's running smooth uh, we'll monitor it for a little bit make sure everything's good but what we did is we we pulled those uh, other two scrs off of that started this down and it's doing fine what we've come to is whether these are bad, which I, I doubt. I think they may have just given us the wrong ones. And so these were not the right ones for this application. Thankfully, we were able to Frankenstein this together. They've got three compressors now. That's going to get them a lot further than what they've been. And they've got some redundancy because they don't actually need all three uh, to stay online to keep up with the load here. So now if one does go down, you know, they've got some breathing room that they didn't have before. That's going to wrap this one up, guys. Hope it made sense. I kind of came in, you know, I was trying to figure out when I was even going to bring you into this one. It, it was a lot happening. You know, there was the, there's a lot of configuration. Uh, you know, like I said in the early beginning, uh, our biggest problem we had up front, especially on this one, was just the, the programming. We, we forgot to set the amp ratings. And then also we had to calibrate the uh, CT ratio because that was not correct. Out the gate or out the box, it was at 2640. And that is not the CTs that this has, it's the 864s. So anyway, we're good, we're running, we're smooth. We'll check our refrigerant while we're here. Don't expect any issues there. And we're gonna recommend that they put air bleeders on the top of the EVAPs in addition to fixing some of their other air issues. But that's a whole separate story, separate issues, separate videos, separate everything. Appreciate y'all, MTT, take time.